Hello guys and very welcome to this battery project. Today it's time to create all the wires that I now need to connect this battery to my inverter down in the basement. So, well, this is part one and here we go. First, let's take a closer look at the connector here. Here we have the low voltage connector. So um, you can see that we have eight pins in it. And uh, this is the constant positive. And then we have the ignition. And then uh, I can't remember which one it was now, but two of those here are the can high and can low. And then we have two grounds here. Uh, then I am going to use one of those screws here. Uh, just for grounding the whole battery and then we have the high voltage connector here so this one is the negative and this one is the positive and you can also see that they have actually marked the terminals here so uh, even on the cables there is one red mark on the positive one so it's uh, really really great uh, to work together with a battery like this when they have um, when they have marked up everything it's only the low voltage the side here that are a little strange but we are going to take a look at the schematics a little bit later on here so now we are in my kitchen and my wife is not home so i think that we will be able to pull this off really smoothly this time <laughs> okay jokes aside so here are two repair cables from uh, volkswagen you will find a port number down in the description and if we now take a closer look at the pins here or the connectors you can see that they are rectangular shaped and uh, i think that those will fit really nicely on those pins and don't float around too much i have also put on some shrink tubes around them so they will be insulated and uh, not short anything out here and by the way here is also the schematics on those uh, pins that we looked at earlier so um, we have 12 volt constant ignition i am not planning to use this one here then we have a can high can low and this one is not used at all and then we have two negatives down here right don't mess this up because if you do that well then your BMS will probably be burned out or not working afterward. Okay, so make sure to have this correct the first time. So let's now take and solder those wires into a network cable that later on will go into the Villigos. So I am finally ready and uh, I have also marked the cables here with some tags so I know where to connect them. 
So um, I will now use that little box I built this summer for this. So I have this here. You will have a link up here in the corner if you would like to know more about this, how I built it and stuff. Uh, so I have a dual Lily goes inside of this one. I have one for the constant 12 volt, one for the ignition, and then one for the 5 volt to power those Lily goes. We are going to talk more about this box later on. And here's the high voltage cable and the connectors. This end will go into the car. We are not going to have any need for this one, sadly. It's a really nice connector, but uh, I cannot use it for anything because I don't have the other side of it. So uh, this end is uh, going into the battery and it is sitting like this and it's screwed in place and uh, there is also a rubber gasket on this side so this will be uh, completely sealed up when it's screwed on to the battery. So my plan now is to cut the wires here and the solder on some uh, solar cables or um, I have not really decided if I should do that or if I should go with the uh, cables that I plan to use in the end because this will now be uh, just temporary for a while so I think I go with the solar cables and do it uh, the right way with the heavier gauge later on right let's do this A little strange. So it says 1000 volts DC and then 1500 volts. But it does not say if it is 1500 volt AC or something. So yeah, <laughs> that's strange. So here is how it looks. It's uh, triple insulated or double insulated. This is just some tape on the after layer. So I think it's uh, around uh, 35 square millimeters of thickness, this cable. Very, very fine strained cable. And then we also have a shield around everything here. So let's keep on going here. So now it's time to insulate everything. So this will be the first layer. And then I have the second one here. All the way up to the shielding. So let's shrink it. And let's now take the third layer on top of everything here. Just like that.
So now you can see the hot glue coming out here. I will press a little bit on it so just to make sure that uh, it will be really sealed up. I think that this will be a good uh, safe insulator. And by the way, this is just temporary anyway until I have it on the right spot because I will have 10 millimeter square inch, uh, not <laughs> square inch, 10 millimeter square cables later on. This is just four. So um, I think it was four, or is it six? Yeah, it is actually six uh, millimeter square. So this will be really nice. It will be good enough to try it out anyway. So let's now connect it to the battery again. And it feels really nice because it fits so good. But of course it should do that also. If you have problems here, there is definitely something wrong here. And by the way, make sure that there is no voltage here before you start to do any work on it because there is always a chance that there can be a contactor in here that are stuck in a closed position and uh, if so you will have a high voltage negative or high voltage positive out from the battery but uh, if just one contactor is uh, closed, there should not be any risk if the rest of the battery is okay, but uh, it's not recommended to uh, try that at all. Measure and make sure that here is at least lower than 12 volts, then you will be just fine. All right, so the high voltage connector is now in place and it's time to connect the low voltage cables that we created earlier here. Well, here is that cable that I created earlier, so it's time now to connect this into this low voltage connector here. And by the way, it is always a much better solution to have the original connector and use that one, because that one is waterproof or watertight. Uh, as it is right now, we have openings between those pins here that leads straight into the battery. So in the long term we will definitely have moisture inside of the battery if we don't close this up. So uh, I will try to get one of those connectors and uh, if I don't uh, are able to have any of those connectors I will seal everything up here with the silicone or something. So I know that uh, I don't have any moisture inside of it. So let's see now. Let's start with the 12 volt constant power. Uh, there was can low. So let's see, there we have ignition, and there is the constant power. So let's now connect that one to the correct pin and then let's take the ignition and then we should have was it can high I never remember I think it was can high yeah, let's do that. Can high and can low. This is the only cables that you can mess up and uh, no magic smoke will come out from mixing those two cables. Maybe not even the constant uh, 12 volt and the ignition of course, but uh, try to have it the right way. <laughs> and then we have the negative down here.
right? I will just go in and double check the can pin out here so I have it the right way. So I don't have to do any troubleshooting and stuff like that later. And uh, you maybe already have seen that, but I have now removed that bolt here. And that bolt are going to be used to hold the ground wire. That will then ground this battery together with my inverter in the basement. So it's really important because you can have voltage differences in the can cables and if you are unlucky you maybe burn your inverter's can card. So <laughs> that's not recommended. I have also measured this uh, connection point here that this is the same ground here that we have in the low voltage connector here and that's important because this ground here will of course be the same ground as the CAN bus system is using so if you don't have any connections between your ground in this connector and the chassis here you probably should look up another place to install your ground so you know that you are having a good grounding system together with your low volt system here okay a lot of talking i'm sorry guys but uh, i think it's important here and let's just take a little quick look at the connectors here so here i have just ordinary solar connections and those are rated to 20 amps so this will be more than enough to test this system or battery all right I have right now double checked the pinouts here and it is correct. So I will now connect this uh, uh, connector here into this junction box that I have here. And this will go into that uh, little box that I showed you with the uh, lily goes inside of it. So I will just connect this one. And now the battery will have both negative and positive to control the relays and also supplying the BMS inside of the battery and then the CAN communication will go into the LilyGo in that box. And the other end here will of course go down to the inverter in my basement. So we are going to connect that to right now. So here is that cable that comes from a basement. Super important to connect it in the right port, of course. All right, so now we are connected. This will be everything for this weekly update on my battery project here. So make sure to subscribe if you would like to see more of it. And then I see you next time. Take care, guys, and goodbye.